All right. Hello and welcome to this episode where we're going to talk about how to overcome intrusive thoughts. So my name is Matt Cotty, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker, the founder of Restored Minds and the creator of the AAA Response. And very often, you know, every week I, I talk to talk to people who are wrestling with intrusive thoughts and intrusive thoughts are a common symptom of OCD, anxiety, depression, you know, really any of the stress related conditions, right? So, you know, panic attacks, uh, social anxiety, right? But when we're talking about intrusive thoughts, generally what we're talking about here are these intrusive thoughts that are invading a person's mind that the content is usually what we call ego dystonic, right? It's not a representation of who they are, what they want. And they're often very disturbing um, and, and tough to deal with, okay? So I wanna talk about, you know, like how do we deal with it? So I want to share a quick story because I think it's, it's such a good analogy for intrusive thoughts um, when you understand it from this context. Okay. So in the movie World War Z with, um, with Brad Pitt, you know, the, they're trying to, you know, this virus is spreading and people are turning into zombies and all that. Right. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it and the doctor who is, is trying to like help solve the, the issue says, um, when they're flying on a plane, he's like, you know, oftentimes with a virus, the thing that seems like the most brutal and disturbing part of it is oftentimes its weakness. And, and, and it's the hard part is understanding that and seeing that. Right. And it was so interesting because, you know, like, um, in, in the movie, basically what happens is, is that they find out that if someone has a, a sickness or is ill or terminally ill, the the zombies essentially won't attack them and, and that's how they end up beating them is they end up um you know uh essentially injecting themselves with different viruses because the virus isn't going to spread into that so it doesn't matter but the point i'm making is is that with intrusive thoughts usually the thing that we think is the is the most brutal part of it is actually the part that works in our favor and so that's what i want to really talk about in this video so let me go ahead and explain from a larger concept. So intrusive thoughts, I mean, they can be anything, right? Intrusive harmful thoughts, intrusive sexual thoughts, intrusive thoughts about one's faith, existential ideas. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Relationships, marriage, right? You know, I mean, they can attack anything. And as the stress elevates in a person's body, what happens is the intrusive thoughts tend to get more frequent and more intense. And what will happen, and, the, and I think the trap that most people fall in, is when you think of this as a thought problem, that that already sets you up for a very hard road. The reason is because if you how you understand a problem is going to determine what you do to try to solve it, and it's going to determine your results. People that wrestle with intrusive thoughts for a long period of time, the reason they wrestle with intrusive thoughts for so long is because they see it as a thought problem, and therefore they try to control and fight and and manipulate their thoughts, which you can't do, right? And, and you know, I, I talk about this all the time, right? You know, try not to think of a white bear. What's the first thing that pops in your mind? Because there, there's evidence and research that are that, that are right on this topic of intrusive thoughts. You cannot you cannot control your thoughts on that level. Okay. Especially when we're talking about high levels of stress and intrusive thoughts, the more and more you try to stop them, the more worse and worse they're going to get. And, and that's called the ironic process by Daniel Wagner, white bears and other unwanted thoughts is uh, the book I think that he wrote back in the eighties. And so it's again, this, this research is very, um, it's been around for a while now. So when it comes to intrusive thoughts though, because if we see it as a thought problem, we're, we're already stepping in the wrong direction. What we need to understand is intrusive thoughts are part of a loop, right? And like I talk about the OCD and the anxiety wheel. If we try to stop the thoughts or try to stop the anxiety that the thoughts produce, we're going to engage in behaviors that are paradoxically going to reinforce them, okay? That's why the, the goal of intrusive thoughts is actually not to stop the thoughts at all, but to stop the behaviors you're doing that are ultimately reinforcing them. So, any thought checking, you know, analyzing, trying to solve the question, right? You know, that you're trying to solve, you know, because that's what intrusive thoughts usually do is they produce this doubt about this specific topic that usually is very sensitive to you or very important to you. So you try to solve it and solve it and solve it. And that's the wheel that people get caught in, right? That's, that's what it is. And like I said, though, 
and, and, that, and that's exactly why we teach the AAA response at Restored Minds, right? Because instead of telling people not to do compulsions, you know, we, we set up a process um, and, and by following that process, it ensures that you're not going to engage in those behaviors. Okay. And he, there's a little guide down in the links that will really get you started on that, where you can kind of learn about it and, and, um, you know, start to, to really implement it. Um, so with that said, one of the things that seems so brutal to people about intrusive thoughts is just how relentless they are. And they bounce from theme to theme, to theme, to theme, to theme. So someone might wrestle with harmful intrusive thoughts at some point and then sexual intrusive thoughts and then thoughts about their marriage and relationship and then oh you know now it's switched to existential and what the mistake people make is they start taking the theme that they're wrestling with or the content of the mind and they try to solve that and that and that and they're on this endless wheel and it just bounces from theme to theme to theme and that's what they think is so brutal about it is that the intrusive thoughts pop up with new content every day they're relentless they're with you all the time and paradoxically, what I'm going to make the argument about is that that's actually their weakness. Now, let me explain. So be, if we understand this is a thought problem, we're going to struggle. Okay. Like if you, if you understand intrusive thoughts as a thought problem, you're going to try to stop the thoughts. And that, like I said, that's going to, that's a trap. That is the trap that everyone falls in. When we understand it as a behavior problem though, what we understand is that if we engage in, in the correct behaviors, behaviors that don't reinforce, right? That's what ERP is, right? If we remove all the behaviors that are essentially reinforcing this loop, the loop breaks. So when we understand this as a behavior problem, what we understand is the more and more we do exposure and response prevention with thoughts, the, the quicker we break that wheel. And, and ultimately through ERP, we, we uh, enable you know neuroplasticity in the brain, which allows for the reprogramming and essentially developing of new circuitry in the brain. This is, if you're wrestling with intrusive thoughts, it's so important that you hear this, right? By engaging in the correct behaviors again and again and again, you're creating new circuitry quicker. You're walking those trails in your mind quicker and more frequently. So the fact that the intrusive thoughts are flying up so frequently, that actually gives you more opportunity to do the correct things and heal okay and, and and that's that's why i wanted to share that that analogy of the world war z um thing where the doctor's like you know the, oftentimes the thing we think is the worst thing about the virus is actually it's weakness in disguise that's so true with intrusive thoughts the fact that they're so frequent the fact that they're so intense and just bombarding you is paradoxically your opportunity to engage in the in, in the exposure and response prevention, you know, by using the AAA response. And if you do that consistently, that's what is going to enable you to heal quicker because you're going to have more opportunity to do it because the thoughts are coming on so frequently. If you had one intrusive thoughts uh, and one intrusive thought a day and you, you know, use the AAA response and engaged in exposure and response prevention. Okay. Like, that's great. You, you know, you did it once. If you have, you know, 2000 thoughts a day and you do it every single time, you see how you're you're actually strengthening the new circuit more and more and more. And and if you understand it from this concept, then what you think is so what we often think is so scary about intrusive thoughts, right? The fact that they're so intense and so frequent and and you know so overwhelming becomes the thing that we actually can use to get ourselves better. And I know this may not be exactly what you want to hear, right? You know, you might have, you know, started listening or watching this episode and like, oh, well, Matt, it says how to get rid of intrusive thoughts. And, you know, you're thinking I'm going to give you some like, hey, do X, Y, and Z, and you know, drink apple juice and this and this or whatever, right? And all of a sudden the thoughts are going to go away. No, what, what happens is, is that your mind is not going, your mind doesn't want to waste energy, right? Your brain doesn't want to waste energy. Thoughts are energy, right? So, if it's producing the same thought again and again, the reason is, is because it thinks it's serving you. You know, it thinks it's helping you. And the more and more you engage in behaviors that reinforce the thought, the more your brain's like, oh, well, this thought must really be important. When we stop engaging in the behaviors, we break the wheel and we show our brain like hey, this thought isn't helping us, it's not serving us, right? It, you know, and then your brain eventually kind of figures out and recategorizes it. So 
paradoxically, by doing exposure response prevention, you, you break the emotional connection to the thought itself, which allows for the decrease in emotion and the reappraisal of the thought. And, and ultimately what happens is your brain's essentially kind of recategorized and is like, Oh, we must, we don't need to produce this a bunch. You know, so, so it's, it's a thing where we're retraining our brain that these thoughts, these intrusive thoughts that we're getting flooded with aren't actually serving us. Right. And, and that happens over time. Okay. It, so, so if we're trying to get rid of thoughts today, that's going to keep us stuck over the long term. Our willingness to, to do the correct things today, right? And do, you know, exposure response prevention, use the AAA response, use the, use the skills that are going to get you better is what's going to help you over time. And, and that's, again, going back to what I was talking about last uh, week when I talked about choosing your path of suffering, right? Is that on the path of OCD and anxiety recovery, there is going to be discomfort no matter which way you go. The goal is to choose the suffering today for a better tomorrow as opposed to trying to choose comfort today for suffering tomorrow. That's that's the difference in, in recovery right there. And the more and more we are able to put these tools into practice, what happens is we break the wheel. as we And, and if you really understand this as a behavior problem, it puts you back in control. See, one of the things that, that I also want to talk about today – one of the reasons that intrusive thoughts seem so overwhelming for people is because they're trying to control something that they're completely not in control of. And that leaves, you know, a very intense feeling of helplessness and hopelessness in people's minds and, and hearts, right? Because it's like harder and harder I've tried to do this and harder and harder I try to fight these thoughts, the worse and worse they get. Yes, that's going to that's gonna happen because you're not looking at the problem correctly. And again, I did this for, for many years of my life. So I'm not one, this is not me like casting stones. This is me like, hey, learn from what I did. You know, that's really most of what I put out, you know, with my, with taking back control, you know, with our groups and, and all the, all the work that I do is usually me looking at all the missteps that I took on my journey and saying, hey, like, please don't take that step. You know, I, I went that route. It doesn't work or this was the wrong way. And my hope is, is that it can save you time from not having to learn the same uh, mistake that I had learned. So to summarize this, this whole concept today, um, when we are talking about, you know, uh, intrusive thoughts, what we're talking about here is, is just energy. It's a manifestation of stress, right? And with that said, if we try to solve them from a thought level, we're going to get stuck. Okay. Instead, what we want to do is we understand it from the bigger context of understanding the wheel and look at it from a behavioral model and then stop the behaviors that are reinforcing the thoughts. And if we do that, what we can understand is every intrusive thought we have is a chance for us to stop the behavior, which then allows us to break the wheel even more. So, seeing the fact that we have a lot of intrusive thoughts on that day or you know or if we're experiencing a lot of intrusive thoughts i need you to understand that that's actually a ton of opportunity for you to do the right behaviors and ultimately get yourself better and when you can reframe it for yourself like that you're actually going to feel more empowered and and more in control because you're going to be focusing on the things that you can control and again we have some uh, a link right down in the notes um that will give you a free guide that that you can start learning what to do um, and, you know, or, or start to really put, put these uh, tools into practice. And I really break down these concepts a little more, um, in that guide. And again, it's totally free. Just download it, um, below. And, um, you know, for those of you that are struggling with this also at Restored Minds, look, we have higher levels of support available for you in our programs and our group programs and our individual coaching. Right. And so, um, th this isn't something that you need to go out alone either. I think that's another thing that people do that I just want to talk about is, there's so much shame and guilt with these thoughts that there's an embarrassment of getting help and it's embarrassment of sharing. But oftentimes when you're able to talk to someone who really understands what you're experiencing, that burden is just able to lift off your shoulders a bit because, you know, it, it, you don't have that, that shame of trying to hide it from everyone, right? Like, they, like these are real things and many, most people experience intrusive thoughts, okay? Especially when we're talking about OCD and anxiety. A very normal thing when we when we tell ourselves that they're abnormal that actually prevents us from getting better so 
your willingness to to seek help if this is something that you're struggling with is important. And and don't try to just do this on your own, right? You know, because again, it, you'll, what will happen is is that it'll take you longer. And, and when you can get guidance and, and the right guidance on this journey, it will consolidate your recovery time a lot, which will then open up time for you to then do the things you want to do with your life. So. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys get that concept that I was going for with the World War Z. Um, again, check out the links in the notes for uh, more resources. Please help us out by liking and subscribing and sharing this uh, with anyone that you think would be helpful. And with that said, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Have a great day, guys, and take care. Thank you so much for watching that video. And so if you're struggling with OCD and anxiety, I just wanted to let you know that we have a free training for you um, over at Restored Minds where you can start learning how to use our AAA response to really break out of that loop and ultimately take back control of your life. And all you need to do to get access is just click the little link below and you'll be taken to a page where you can register today. Thank you so much.